a more radical policy agenda, but when we invited him to our programme to tell us more about his plans for the party, he declined. However, we spoke to one of his main supporters, Neil Finlay, about Labour's future and the former leader, Kezia Dugdale's decision to appear in the TV show, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Well, your man won. You must be delighted. Absolutely delighted. Uh, I'm delighted for Richard uh, on a personal level, but I think politically, uh, I, I think this is the way that Scottish Labour Party wants to go forward in a, a completely different agenda, radical agenda, and um, I'm absolutely delighted. Were you surprised by how wide the margin of victory was? Because there was talk of it being very close. Uh, I, oh, from the beginning, I said I, I thought it would be close. I did think it would be close, um, but I, I was pleased with the margin of victory, um, and I think it gives him a very strong mandate. Where is he? Sorry? Where is he? We asked him on the programme today. It's his first day as leader of Scottish Labour. Why isn't he here explaining what he wants to do? But I would expect after um, nine weeks of a very intense campaign, I hope he's having a bit of rest and having a bit of time with his family, uh, because I certainly would be after such an intense period of campaigning. No, you wouldn't. You would be saying, hey, here I am, I want to tell you what I'm... Oh, this is so exciting. Don't worry about that, Gordon. There's uh, plenty of time for all of that. Uh, but uh, seriously, I think, you know, people um, underestimate the intensity of being involved in a campaign like that. And it is right that people spend time with their family and okay. take a bit of downtime. He's I think, in, that, think that's right. He's in the news and not here. Someone else who's in the news and not here is Kezia Dugdale because she's flying off to... Australia, what do you make of her deciding to appear on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here? I think utterly ludicrous. Uh, ludicrous position. Uh, I think we have a uh, situation where we're in the run-up to the budget in Scotland, where local government is on its knees, where the NHS uh, is showing pressures like never, never before, when people's living standards are falling, and they expect their uh, MPs, MSPs, councillors and elected representatives to be in fighting on their behalf uh, and I don't think people would expect um, them to uh, jet off around the world and sit around a campfire eating you know, kangaroos appendage. Uh, what, how, what would you say to people in the Labour Party and there are some supportive of Kezia Dugdale on this who say look come on we're all being a bit poor faced here it's just a bit of fun. Well, I think it demeans politics when people get involved in that. I think, you know, we've got a very serious job to do. Um, people out, out there are struggling and there's huge pressures in public services. And that's the job we should be doing. And, you know, I take my job very seriously. Uh, so do my colleagues. And I think they would expect, uh, they, they would expect better. Now, the other person from Labour who's been in the news this week is... Alec Rowley in a much more serious sense. Um, he's been suspended from the Labour Party uh, pending investigation of the, of the case. Do you think that was the correct decision to suspend him? Well, can I say this? I think this whole um, situation that's developed around uh, harassment is a very worrying one. Um, and we have to be very supportive of particularly the women who are making complaints uh, and who are alleging uh, wrong behaviour. We have to, they have to be supported. Um, but we also have to be very careful about those who are accused of misbehaviour. And there has to be due process going through any workplace that I have been in where someone is involved in misconduct, there's a due process takes place and then, then a decision is made on whether they are um, guilty or innocent. And I think we just have to be very careful in this. Um, I'm taking... Can I take from what you've just said that you think maybe he should not have been suspended? Well, uh, all I'm saying is the Labour Party's got a process. Um, that process will be going through and the outcome of that will be there for everyone to see. Yeah, we know that, but what I'm asking you is should he have been suspended or should he have been left in well, place pending pending that inquiry? I, I don't know all of the detail of the case. I've only read one side of what is, or I've only read what's been in the media, and that has been a very one-sided version of events. Now, I, I, I stress for the woman who made that, those complaints, this is a very serious issue, and I hope that she is being supported just as I hope there are systems in place to support anyone who is accused of this. 
Now, the challenges facing Scottish Labour, I, I, I might be wrong, I think it was Richard Leonard who kept pointing out that although you did well relatively in the recent general election in Scotland, perhaps better than you expected to do yourselves, that actually there was a bit of an optical illusion going on because Labour only gained about 10,000 votes. Um, how do, what do you do to try to get the Corbyn phenomenon that swept England on the go up here? Well, we now have someone who very much shares the same politics, similar politics, to what Jeremy has been put forward and what, what were put forward in that manifesto that was so successful. Um, so I think we've now got a, a credible leader who... The, for the but do, do, do you think you've got, I mean, even at the level of membership, there has been, I think I'm right in saying, a bit of an increase in Labour membership in Scotland, mm -hmm. but nothing like the, the, the you know, the Labour in England now says the British Labour Party is the biggest political party in Western Europe. How do you get that momentum? Well, what we uh, found on the doorstep at the election, Gordon, was that people were saying to us, we really like what the manifesto is saying, we really like Corbyn, but we're not sure about Scottish Labour. They saw... Scottish Labour being out of kilter with what was being said in the manifesto and uh, and the line that was being taken by the leadership across the UK. Now, I think they'll be much more aligned. Uh, uh, Richard will be his own man. I mean, I mean, you must be sure about that. But um, I think he will be more in line and I think it's much more credible that someone like Richard carries that message of uh, for the many, not the few. So you, you would like to see an, an uptick in membership? You Absolutely. would like to see people... But people could, uh, I think people who have um, been questioning whether Scottish Labour is reflective of the, the mood across... But, but wait, just wait, a moment, just a moment. I just, just wanted moment, to ask you... Just a moment. Well, okay. You've asked me a question, I need to answer it. I think people can now come and join us, they can okay. now support us because they're much more but We're r running out of time. What, what I wanted to do was pick up something you just said. You said that during the election people felt that Scottish Labour was not aligned with... Now, is that because you... Th were they telling you that Scottish Labour was not left-wing enough? Or were they uh, telling you, and it's something that both Anna Sauer and Richard Leonard seemed to suggest during the campaign, that Labour was seen to be a bit wobbly in the whole question of independence? Um, actually, I think... Uh, the election told us many things, but if we look at the campaign, in the last week of that election campaign, we heard Nicola Sturgeon saying that if you want Corbyn's politics, you have to vote SNP. A ridiculous proposition, but that was the line they put out. Why did they put that out? Because they knew that Labour voters were, who had previous Labour voters who had gone to SNP were coming back to Labour. Now, had we focused on the manifesto about issues around the living wage, about housing, about public services, instead of banging on about the referendum again, then I think we would have had more than the seven seats that we won. OK, we are out of time, so this has to be sort of yes and no answers. Do you want a job in, in, in Mr Leonard's team? I have never asked any Labour leader for a job ever, and I'm not going to start now. Um, if he offers you one, would you accept? I will help Richard in any way he needs help. Should Anasawa have a job in Richard Leonard's team? It's up to Richard to pick them. If it was me, What's your view? if it was me, I would appoint him. As? Uh, I, I don't know. I would have that. I would have a discussion with Anas, and I would appoint him. All right. We'll have to leave it there. Neil Finlay, thank you very much.